Yes, I am going to start every one of these videos smoking a cigarette. Today, I'm going to talk about world building. I do not mean the kind of world building that you would do with an original setting so much as in a fan fiction aspect. Although there is some overlap between the two. The difference is that world building your own creation is simple. You lay out the rules. You're the one designing everything. If the cultures are incompetent, that's because you don't know what you're doing. World building in an existing setting means you have some things laid out, but usually not all the small details you need. Mass Effect is a very good example of this in that there's a lot of things they did right, and there's a lot of things they did not so right. Uh, but in the course of playing the game itself, you rarely think about the things they didn't do right. It, it doesn't come up. That's good world building. World building is not a single thing. It is three elements that you must consider that are always interrelated. Uh, the world of the, the setting itself uh, and the species within it, the races or what have you, the nation states. Uh, it is the world building of the setting, uh, the technology levels, the civilization levels, how well or to what degree creatures interact with one another. And then the world of the history and the background of how we got to this point. Each one of those aspects is going to flavor everything about everything you build past that point. When designing the world building aspects for of sheep and battle chicken, the main consideration I had to look at was, all right, I have elements. I have things that are already laid out. How do I build on those and yet tweak them to make them unique. Uh, you do not want to ever try to recreate the wheel when doing culture. You want to work with what you have and build on it in an incremental fashion. The biggest problem people run into is that they treat world building as a goal instead of a tool. When you do that, you start adding things that don't give you any additional options or any additional writing capabilities, but will come back to bite you in the ass later on down the line. I, I call these potential blocks. Uh, any aspect that you're going to pin down for an advance of actually running across it in the story, uh, be that some kind of hard timeline of dates and times or uh, specific hard facts about uh, what occurred, the more in detail you get in your world building historicals, the more you have to adhere to that when you're writing your story. Uh, you want to use the details to enhance what you're trying to get across. Like for example, say the, the history of the Citadel. Uh, I didn't pin down a lot of timelines or, or, or firm dates when I was writing that because I wanted room to insert new events as I needed to. Uh, if you sit down and you establish a hard timeline of this happened here and this happened here and this happened here at the very beginning and then three years down the line you, you want to change something, well, you have to retcon everything. That doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't do that when you were crafting your own story, you'd write the hard fictional parts and then you'd go back and fill in the details. This is what you should do with world building. 
You want to focus on sticky details that remain on people's minds rather than dates and, 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 and historical trivia. It sounds good, but it really actually delivers. The biggest world about world building is not a timeline. It is building cultures that seem realistic. Uh, this is true if you're doing high fantasy, if you're doing sci-fi with aliens, if you're doing non-humans, ninja, fairy tale, vomit, whatever. Uh, a culture needs to be cohesive, consistent, and focused, because that's what a real culture is. It is a collection of like-minded individuals that have shared belief systems that has endured over time because it is successful. Um, any culture that does not meet those criteria in real life is either assimilated or, or splinters or changes entirely. By cohesive, I mean the culture should reinforce the aspects of the species or the group. Turians, we're told in Mass Effect, uh, are, are very communalistic, but at the same time very individualistic. Everything is, is for the greater good, and yet that seems to be something each Turian is expected to define for him or herself. <coughs> in order to make that cohesive, then, you have to have a method of testing if someone is actually worth their meritology. Um, and, and thus I came up with the trial system. Uh, it has to be focused in that the culture evolves and can, consists of rules and mores and, and, and actions and behaviors because these things were successful in helping them adapt and survive. Uh, with their sorry you have such a high prevalence of sexuality and with linking and with all of these things because this is what drove them uh, to be successful. Uh, the communality of the Gestalt meant that groups that embraced this, this type of thinking uh, were more able to survive and deal with early challenges than those that retained individualism. And it should be consistent. The biggest problem I see in world building and, 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 and people who try to build out cultures is that you have cultural aspects that don't match up with the actual culture. A very good example of this in, in, in Mass Effect, I would say, would be uh, the way the Salarians were treated. Uh, we, we're told they're highly intellectual, highly logical, they process their emotions rapidly, uh, but most of the Salarians we deal with, Enoleus, Linron, pretty much every Salarian except for Morden and maybe Kirihi, is an illogical fucking idiot. M what the hell? Make your members of a culture demonstrate that culture's traits. Or if there's some kind of maverick, make sure you point that out. I can kind of maybe buy it, you know, for someone, but not a major CEO or the leader of the entire species. Booking their own trends makes no sense. Another big mess up when you're trying to develop a culture is to make them humans in rubber suits. Aliens, be that sci-fi aliens or orcs or whatever, are not human. The more you humanize them, the, the more you rely on human ideals and human concepts and human tropes, uh, the less realistic it's going to seem. You should have at least one moment when someone is reading about your alien culture and they go, what in the actual fuck? That's how you know it's alien. The very word should tell you that. Avoid direct links to human concepts, and if you have to flip things 180 degrees, go way out there and then look at it and say, okay, how can I tie this back to their culture and how does it make them different? Uh, avoid what TV Tropes calls the Planet of the Hats Syndrome, where uh, a 
a species or a group is defined by one thing. Uh, it's easy and handy to define them like that, but then you end up with bullshit like Asari being <sighs> panty flinging party girls instead of supposedly the race that's dominating the galaxy. Uh, and this ties back into being consistent. Uh, the, the more cliches and tropes you use that make sense in human terms, the further off the mark you're going to be in defining these people as alien. You want to focus on things as well when you're dealing with cultures. Food, art, music, dance, religion. Uh, not history, not politics. I mean, those play a role, but we can't even decipher the politics of some of the cultures on Earth. Uh, the takeaways that will stick with people when they read and when they when they when they think about it are these underlying details. Uh, I went to the trouble of, of trying to cook several of the foods I came up with for some of my races just to see if it was you know possible. And um, the vegetarian stuff didn't go very well, but it was an interesting experiment. That kind of thing gives you writing opportunities if you have a blank space. You can describe someone preparing a traditional meal and then going into why it's traditional. Um, it allows you to expand the, the spotlight from which you can see how these aliens operate w without going into, you know, the, the politics or, or the deep end of history because that doesn't, doesn't define a culture. Another spar of world building that I think people tend to ignore is economics. How are these, how is this culture viable when it comes to labor and, and money? And remember that money is a human idea. Um, I don't want to intimate that aliens should somehow be better than humans and not need money to work or, or, or what have you. We don't know how aliens are going to think and uh, a transactional exchange may or may not be something that they come up with on their own. You don't want to be afraid to invalidate these things if you have a framework for something else. Um, if you have, say, a hive mind race, that's, they're not going to need money. Even if there's individuality involved, they're all going to work for the greater good, and they're all going to be rewarded on a communal level. Um, on the other hand, if you have carnivores that are using competition with each other, I would never expect to see communism from these people. Um, don't drop anvils about your political, economic, fiscal beliefs either. That's a big turnoff for a lot of people. Um, when I try to write, I try to write both sides of a situation uh, with the goal of reaching an equilibrium point from which you can say, all right, this is why these groups or these groups believe this way financially because of this aspect of their culture which ties back into the cohesive consistent and focus and ties back into the history in the background you you don't want an economic model because it's convenient or because you think pick one socialism capitalism whatever is evil um, that's how you get to stupid situations like you see in the sort of truth series <clears throat> detail making is another part of world building that people tend to gloss over in that they try to focus on the big stuff to impress people uh, language and, 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 and clothing and appearances and uh, outre physiological stuff and I've done that too we all do it but the small things the little details are what's going to build out your species. For example, let's say you have an, an aquatic race. Their language and their, and their culture and their economy should focus around the ocean. You should see them using sayings about the oceans and the tides, their, their concerns 
would be focused on that and not on all land-based creatures. They would focus more on aquaculture and uh, aquatic farming than, than land development. They might not even have the idea of agriculture or ranching as we understand it. Uh, the material science they would use would be more focused towards that. Uh, their, 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 the sh designs of their weapons would be optimized for underwater combat. Be liberal with details that do not pin you down to a specific set of actions and use generalities that create open situations. Well, I'll give you another example. Let's say you have, pick one, a lizard race, subterranean, uh, semi-hive mind. There's individualism, but th there's also a connection between those species. Very emotional, herbivores, pack-oriented. If I was writing a culture, the, the, the main things I would be focusing on is a sense of interconnectedness, of, of pack safety, of avoidance of predators, uh, marshalling of resources, uh, avoidance of light, uh, the use of other senses to describe the world around them. Smell, touch would be more important. Wind currents would be more important. I would have their language reflect things in an auditory and olfactory sense rather than, hey, I see where you're coming from. I can, I can, it would be something about smell or taste. Um, art and music would be approached from a different perspective. It would be collectivist, multiple people performing, multiple people viewing. Um, gestalts would define the politics. Group utility would define economics. All of these things would tie together, ideally, in something that was recognizable, but not human. This is just an introduction to the concepts. I'm going to go more in depth in later videos. Um, but there's three takeaways you should always do when you're world building. <clears throat> The first, and the most important, is like I said, it's a tool, not a goal. When you build out cultures or situations, they should be to support what you're trying to write. Second, world building is not something you should do all at once. It's a process. You should do it as you write. It should develop along with your writing. You should not be afraid to change it as you go along. Uh, and third, don't consider world building an activity in and of itself. It is a supportive element of what you're trying to write about. So just as the world building should provide details to your writing, to whatever you're making, you should make sure that your writing elements reflect on the world building. I know that sounds vague as fuck, so I'm going to try to give you an example. When I initially did the world building for the Systems Alliance, I knew I wanted something negative because humans. At the same time, I wanted positivity to come from that. This resulted in me sort of corralling the evil stuff to the High Lords, whereas the Lords of Saul were heroic and, and humble and heroes who risked their lives to become nobles, and that wasn't why they did that, but that was the result. And somewhere along the line, it occurred to me that there's so much deception from the High Lords because they don't have buy-in from the rest of the Lords of Saul, that if the others knew what the High Lords were doing, uh, they would oppose them. That, in turn, drove the politics of the Council of Lords and certain sponsoring actions in the Senate and the political parties and why the High Lords would rely on crazy, kooky groups like Cerberus and Hades to begin with. 
because they allow them to act without being observed. They allow them to take actions that are hideous, that are directly what the High Lords want, and yet when they get caught, they can disavow themselves. Make sure that you link dynamically between what you're writing and, and, and what you're building. Uh, if you don't keep them lined up, if you don't keep them interacting with each other, uh, eventually you're going to notice a dissonance between the situation you've written about and the situation you've described in your world building. Um, and you, you, you can actually see this in a lot of different places. Uh, you can see it in the Fallout games where there's hundreds of posts on why this makes no sense why would people do this why wouldn't people clean up the trash in their communities that type of thing um, finally perhaps the least important aspect of all of this is that world building should not be a tedious mind numbing drain if at some point it just gets to be impossible to deal with why are you doing it let it go you don't have to detail out every little thing uh, the more in depth you go you know you can go the Tolkien route but keep in mind he didn't finish you can go the George R. R. Martin route and keep in mind he hasn't finished it either uh, you, you want a balance between, okay, this gives me a lot of tools to write with and explore new things and spin-offs, and you are now spending more time crafting your world than writing in it. That's something you want to avoid. I will have additional videos on this topic, starting with How to World Build 101 and continuing on from there. as I figure out ways to describe this without sounding like a lunatic. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like.